Nobody seems to like nuclear power plants. This fact alone qualifies the subject as an excellent acne item. But beyond that, these Canadian can-do nuclear power plants do have some likable qualities. For one thing, they're kind of simple. You can build a can-do reactor in your basement if you like. All you need are some of these fuel pellets and some heavy water. The pellets are natural uranium as it comes from the ground, refined and turned into a ceramic. The pellets go into bundles like this. The bundle of fuel needs to be surrounded by heavy water, deuterium. Deuterium is present in ordinary lake water. It just needs to be separated. Normally in nature, uranium is always decaying into a lighter element by emitting some of its neutrons. Normally these neutrons whiz away so quickly that they have little significance. As a matter of fact, the can-do uranium pellet can be held safely in your hand. Things change when you immerse the pellets in heavy water. The deuterium slows down the whizzing neutrons to the point where they have a good chance of colliding with another uranium nucleus. This will cause the release of another neutron or two and so on. This is the famous chain reaction. The reaction produces various radioactive products and heat. Because the heavy water slows down the travel of those whizzing neutrons, it's referred to as a moderator. To complete your homemade nuclear reactor, you need a boiler and a steam-powered electric generator. To keep with can-do design, the plumbing gets connected like this. Circulate heavy water around your fuel pellet bundle. It will heat up. In a separate plumbing circuit, circulate a different batch of heavy water to take away all the heat that's generated by the reaction. This heavy water meets ordinary water in a heat exchanger. The two waters don't mix in the heat exchanger, but the heat causes the ordinary water to boil. The steam from the heat exchanger, or steam generator in can-do terminology, will turn the fan blades of your turbine, and then the turbine turns your electrical generator. You'll need to cool the steam to condense it and send it back to the steam generator. Lake water is handy for this, so a location by the lake is a good idea. By the time you're done building all of this, you will probably fill your entire basement. It'll be worth it, though. That little fuel bundle the size of a rye bread will run your house for about 100 years. Before you rush out to build a reactor for yourself, you should also know that the can-do specifications call for safety systems that will increase the size of your little reactor by a factor of about 10. You'll need a bigger basement. The Darlington number one reactor that we visited uses 480 of these tubes, each with 13 fuel bundles. The tubes are a tube within a tube to keep the moderator water separate from the heat transfer water. Nuclear power plants are similar to any power generating facility, but a lot cleaner. Every dust speck has to be accounted for. So does every mop, rag, and broom. As you cross various barriers from area to area, a radiation check is mandatory, with particular emphasis on your hands and feet. Having undergone any of several medical procedures at your doctor's office is enough to set off one of these alarms. The reactor itself is hidden behind two meters of concrete. After you pass that little barrier, there's an elaborate airlock system. This is the face of the reactor itself. The round things are the fuel bundle tubes. I'm not in any danger here because the reactor hasn't been operated yet and there's no radioactivity. After the reactor is operated, people won't be in this room, except in protective suits and for a very short time. Each fuel bundle will remain in the reactor for about 15 months. The reactor is refueled while it's still operating by a robotic fueling machine. At the top of the tubes, you can see the plumbing that carries the heat transfer water to and from the tubes. This is the side of the reactor, and these are the poison injectors. 
Poison, in nuclear reactor terminology, refers to any substance that will absorb those whizzing neutrons and stop the reaction. This is one of two safety shutdown systems on the CANDU. This is the other safety shutdown system. These are the tops of the reactor's control rods. The rods are made of a substance that absorb neutrons. They can be raised and lowered to control the reaction. Normally, the rods are used to balance the heat in various parts of the reactor, but they're held in place by electromagnets. If the power to the electromagnets is interrupted, the rods fall completely in, automatically stopping the reactor. This is the vacuum containment building outside the reactor building. It's always under vacuum. Should a pipe carrying radioactive, hot, heavy water break, the steam will be whooshed into here. This is not a full solution, but it will allow time for a plan B to be implemented while the danger is contained. There are too many safety devices and strategies to go into. Basically, the plant is designed to withstand the direct crash hit of a jet airliner, if that makes you feel more comfortable. If you have a hot water furnace in your house, there's a good chance you have one of these. Well, same idea, different scale. This is the motor for the reactor's main circulating pump. It's being installed. It's a 13,000 horsepower job. This is the, um, well, okay, it's a pool. One of two that serves four reactors. It's true that nuclear power has a famous downside. There's no acceptable plan for disposing of the highly radioactive used fuel. Well, there is a plan. For now, used fuel is stored under ordinary water. This is an adequate solution for about 20 years. What the nuclear industry needs is a plan that will allow us to put the used fuel somewhere where we don't need to keep an eye on it. There will be a big prize for whoever comes up with this plan. Until then, well, like we said, it's a pool. This is the turbine hall. Each of the four reactors on this site has its own electrical generator. This is a generator. Each one is capable of generating 935 megawatts of electrical power. By ACME's calculations, that's enough to make 1,500,000 slices of toast simultaneously. The generators are big, but they're dwarfed by their steam turbines. A turbine is just a windmill that's operated by steam. Steam that's leaving the first turbine still has some energy left, so it's fed to another turbine that twists on the same shaft. The second turbine has larger blades to recover energy from the expanding steam. Altogether, each generator has four turbines on its shaft. The control room of a nuclear power station is probably the only industrial site where you're asked to remove your hard hat. They don't want people saying, oh, gee, look at that, and dropping their hard hat on the controls. You might think that a boo-boo in here would cause some sort of a disaster, but the opposite is more likely. The nuclear reaction takes careful monitoring to sustain. Couple that with the safety systems that will shut the reactor down at the least whiff of any variance, and, well, no hard hats, please. This reactor is still under construction, so there are a lot of extra people here. A normal shift will have two operators and two assistants. There is two of everything else as well. Some of the people on this project have been with it for 15 years, even though the reactor hasn't even been fired up yet. By the time Darlington No. 1 produces power, its operators and workers will be familiar with every nut, bolt, pipe, and meter. They'll know the reactor better than most people know their own families. No matter how you personally feel about big power corporations or nuclear power in general, it's reassuring to know that the hardware is in good hands.